Many insects live in colonies. You may have noticed a swarm of bees buzzing around their hive, or an army of ants marching all over your food. You may have thought, wow, these insects are working together to help each other survive. This is the epitome of teamwork. Well, let me give you another perspective on that. Before we start, we must define what we mean when we talk about an organism. From a biological perspective, we can define an organism as something that can respond to stimuli, can maintain homeostasis to keep itself alive, can grow and develop, and can reproduce to produce fertile offspring. We will define a phenotype as the set of observable traits that an organism may have. Hair color, for example, is part of the phenotype of a typical human. Although less intuitive, what a person chooses to do is also part of his or her phenotype, as is whatever is produced by his or her behavior. An organism's phenotype can be the result of hereditary factors like genetics, as well as environmental factors like diet. Natural hair color, for example, is determined only by genetics. Other traits may be determined by a combination of hereditary and environmental factors. A beehive contains a number of different individuals with a variety of roles. The queen, her drones, and her workers all have physically different bodies and perform different tasks. Normally, we see only the worker bees. Workers are responsible for most of the duties in a beehive. They collect food, they construct the hive, and they protect the hive from threats such as silly old bears. The worker bees in a beehive are all sisters. They all hatch from eggs laid by the queen bee, and they are infertile, so their own genes can't be passed to the next generation. They simply serve the queen until they die. Consequently, worker bees can be considered an extension of the queen bee's phenotype. What they do and how they do it depends on genes that they inherit from the queen. To reproduce, the queen lays unfertilized eggs, which hatch into drones. These drones only carry the queen's genetic information, and they travel to other hives to mate with other queens. The queen also receives drones from other hives and mates with them. Genetic information from these drones is used to produce new queens who will take over the hive or found new hives of their own. Drones can be considered an extension of the queen, since they carry only her genetic material. With every bee in the hive being somehow an extension of the queen, the hive can effectively be considered a single organism. Interestingly, it's a hermaphroditic organism, because it has both male and female reproductive organs. This phenomenon is known as a superorganism. A superorganism is defined as a group of individuals, in this case bees, that behave as though they were one organism. Ant colonies have a similar dynamic. The colony exists to serve the queen, who mates with drones, and is fed by workers. Although there may be various types of workers in a colony, the principle is essentially the same. An ant colony, including the queen, her workers, and her drones, can also be considered as a single organism. Again, the queen and drones serve as reproductive organs, while workers serve as vital organs. Superorganisms come in many forms. Other examples include coral, termites, siphonophores, and in some sense almost any animal with a digestive system, since microbes in our digestive system are important in helping us absorb nutrients from food. So next time you see ants stealing your food, or bees buzzing around their hive, consider that these insects are part of an insect colony, and that this colony is one of the most complex organisms on Earth. Thanks for watching! Hi, have you got any comments, ideas, or questions? Don't buzz off, leave them below, honey. And if you want to see more, subscribe.